Hey guys, so in the last video we installed our home switches and set up our soft limits and in this video I'm going to be working on flood coolant. Okay, the materials we're going to use for our flood coolant is a five gallon bucket. Uh, you can pick these up at your local home center. The next item is a miniature fountain pump. Uh, this particular pump was only about uh, $20. It's a 200 gallons per hour. Uh, it's a very small pump, it's very inexpensive, and I think it'll work uh, just fine for the flood coolant and give me enough flow that I need. The next item we're gonna use is some quarter inch polyethylene tubing. The next item is a line lock. Uh, some type of material to uh, connect everything together. Uh, and this will also be our base. This is some plastic, but you could use aluminum. Uh, some of these super magnets uh, to hold the base in place. Of course, we're going to need some kind of coolant. I'm going to give this cool mist a try. Uh, this will mix up four gallons. I'll probably mix a couple of gallons at a time. An extension tube to go down inside our bucket. Uh, some type of filter material. Uh, this is just some aluminum mesh. You see this a lot on vent hoods uh, over your stove. I think you can pick these up at, at your local home center as well. Uh, I'm not sure where this came from, but I try to save everything because you never know when you're going to need something. Uh, so I'm going to use this for a pre-filter. You can see through it, so I'm not sure how well it's going to pre-filter, but we have the strainer that's inside of our drain. So that's going to filter the big stuff, and hopefully this will get the smaller stuff. And last but not least, uh, just a small coffee can. This is a plastic coffee bucket that I'm going to set the pump down inside and then I'll put this filter on the inside around. Hopefully. That's the plan. So those are the materials I'm going to be using for the flood coolant project. So let's get started. So the idea is just to have the bucket with the drain dropping down into the bucket like so. Now you may find that they do sell smaller like three gallon buckets and you might find that a little bit more, better suited uh, than the five gallon. But this is what I picked up at the time so I'll go ahead and use this. Um, so what we got to do now is we're going to have to put a hole in our lid. So we'll do that now. Okay, we've got it marked. Now we just need to punch a hole through there. Okay, so I'm just going to use a hole saw to punch a hole through here. You can probably do this with just a utility knife. You just have to be careful. It's not, it's actually kind of soft, so it's not that hard plastic lid. Went through there pretty quick doesn't have to be tight, you just need it to go through. So that takes care of that. Okay, well we got the lid and the bucket sat in place. I'm just checking the fit. And you can see it gives me a little, little room to move it around. Uh, I'm not up against the edge. Not up against the edge, I gave it some room. Uh, you can see how it connects to the drain. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I wanted to make this, you know, fairly easy to get in and out because I'm going to be moving this back and forth between the lathe and the mill. Okay, so that takes care of getting our coolant into the bucket. Now we need to work on getting the coolant up to the cutting tool. Okay, well let's take a little bit closer look at our 
fountain pump here. Uh, it's just a 200 gallon per hour pump. I got this at uh, Harbor Freight, I believe. This is item 68372. Uh, I believe it was like $15. Just a small, cheap pump. 110 volts. This little piece right here just increases or decreases the flow of liquid coolant. So that's all the way up, I believe. Yeah, and then that's the minimum. Comes with these little couple of different adapters, depending on how what you how you're going to hook it up. Um, comes with instructions. Uh, shows different various sizes, I guess. Uh, make sure you hold on to your instructions and file these away. Okay, so we're not going to use this big one. Uh, we're actually going to use this little one because it appears it appears that we'll be able to just take our tubing and slide it through here. It's pretty tight, but it goes right in there, and that'll just hold our tubing in. So that takes care of that. And then we'll take our bucket. My, my thought pattern here is to put the pump in the center of the Folgers can here. Like so. And then we'll take the aluminum mesh, we'll pop it out of its little frame here, uh, and we'll just make a loop like so. Drop this down in there. A little bit taller but I'm not even going to trim it I'm just going to push that down and then our pump will just go down in there like so and I'll put some holes in here and we'll put the lid on like that like so and what my thought process is whatever sediment settles at the bottom I'm not really interested in that because there may be some small particles in there so I thought maybe I'd go up say a half inch or an inch and go around poking holes all the way around drilling some holes maybe some quarter inch holes all the way around uh, maybe two three rows of that and then that'll allow the coolant to get inside the bucket and then let any small particles settle at the bottom so not real sure how it's going to work but let's, uh, we'll do that. So first, let me go ahead and let's just trim this right here. I think I'll just let them come out the side right here and I'll just maybe just put a little, maybe just put a little U-shape right here just for the hoses. Let me get some scissors and we'll do that. Yeah, I think that'll work. I want to, I can put a piece of tape or something over there. I think that'll be good. All right, so let me go around and we'll drill a series of holes in here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm just gonna take a quarter inch bit and I'm just gonna go around and about an inch or so up And 
poke holes through all the way around and I'll probably do a couple of rows all the way around the bucket so it'll fill up with water maybe an inch apart or so doesn't have to look pretty All right, so let me finish that up. Okay, well you can see I've just drilled a couple of rows of quarter inch holes all the way around. And I think that's be sufficient to uh, allow the coolant to come in. And now I'm just gonna place my uh, screen back in here and this will be done. I think that'll work just fine. You can kind of see the light through the holes there. All right, so that takes care of that. We'll get this all buttoned up. Okay, in order to get our coolant up to the cutting tool, uh, I've got to put a couple of holes in the back of my stand here. So I cut one hole here for the coolant and I cut another hole here to pass through my electrical to go to my control box in the back. Get our pump in there and then put our lid back on. I cut my little opening too. A little bit too big there, so I just put a little tape, kind of just give it a little bit of seal. I don't know how high the liquid's going to come in, the coolant's going to come, if it's going to go above the above the can uh, there or not. All right, so let's move on. Now all we need to do is mix up some of our coolant. So the directions for the cool mist say that four fluid ounce with one gallon of water. So this is a 16 ounce bottle and I want to do two gallons so that's eight ounces. So you can see it comes up to here so I just put a mark at the halfway and I'm going to go ahead and mix that in. It doesn't specify how to mix it so that should be pretty uh, self-explanatory. So what I have is I just have two gallons of water and I'm going to just kind of pour them both at the same time. All right, looks like we're at the halfway mark. So we put half of that in.
and you can see that it just covers the bucket by about I mean excuse me just covers the looks like it just covers the coffee can about an inch so that should be good slide this back in to the spot connect the drain I'm just hand tightening the drain uh, I think that should be sufficient uh, remember our drain here all right so now Okay, we can see we've got it connected to our drain. Our line ran up through our hole in the back, comes up back behind the lathe, and attaches to our. So that finishes up this video for our coolant pump and tank. Stay tuned for the next video. I'll do a do it yourself coolant nozzle. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Thumbs up if you like the video. And most importantly, be safe.